Um, then we go back to Rabia. Um, we recall that there are different places uh, near the megaliths and uh, the Sarah's new excavation point, sorry, uh, Dr. Akkor is new, new excavation point during that time. And also in the end of the tunnels where the water station starts. And uh, the ba basic results were about the same what you just saw, just noise with a uh, uh, quite heavy low end. But um, um, the interesting thing, what I recorded there on the last day of my visit with, uh, with my recording assistant, Richard Hoyle, uh, we recorded uh, an infrared sound loop, which is originating uh, about 7 to 10 hertz. And uh, here I'm playing the sample for you guys. Uh, I have looped the sound. The actual sound happened three times, and the first of the three times was audible in the normal year. Uh, the rest two were almost impossible to hear, but you can see them in the files and analyze it. So this is the sample uh, which is looped. The first ultrasound, uh, in, sorry, infrasound, and uh, I have tuned it up, so two octaves. So uh, as the ultrasound, I'm putting uh, a very speedy files downwards, but on infrasound, I'm very speedy upwards. So this is two octaves upwards. Um, we were uh, 
recording uh, in different places, most, mostly in those places where uh, Paolo has uh, discovered uh, uh, the ultrasound uh, emissions uh, with the compounder. Uh, there's a lot of samples from there, but uh, uh, basically there's no special special things uh, happening there because of, uh, there was uh, like like the same problem uh, with the tumors, there was external noises and uh, the wind and stuff. Um, so it's, uh, this method didn't give anything special for us. But uh, when I analyzed these files uh, in Finland um, with the Pro Tools system, digital audio workstation, and I use the special synthesis algorithms, mono and polyphonic, this is one monophonic and this is polyphonic, it means that there is only one note or several notes. And this kind of synthesis uh, algorithm which is working inside the Pro Tools, um, I got some peculiar sounds from the files, so I'm going to play them soon. Uh, but uh, the thing what we should do in the future is to, to make the hydrophone recordings there. And why? I will explain you So This is the sound from the, we could call it the sound of the pyramid as well. Well, uh, 
this Earth diameter, for example, here is, is here 752 hertz. Uh, the results would be uh, what I'm going to show you. It's very near about this frequency. So, uh, second high definition audio uh, was July, uh, July and uh, we had uh, two aquarium audio uh, XLR hydrophones. So the uh, hydrophone is, is, is a kind of a microphone, but it's basically used to uh, in water. Uh, there is lots of wave recordings, dolphin recordings, uh, ice recordings in Greenland, and, and also uh, our good friend military used them as a, with the submarines. Um, and it's a, it's a very, very uh, high-tech machine in a way. It's small and it's very uh, rough and rugged, yes, tough, tough. And you can dig it to the ground and you can put it to the water. And, and it's also, it has a very high frequency response from, from 10 hertz to 100 kilohertz. If the uh, recorder can record until that point. Then I also had a DPA condenser uh, studio microphone and also a different NKH Sennheiser microphone, the same microphone that I used on my first trip. And another digital recorder I took with me also, it was a professional, very, the best uh, portable digital recorder in the world, so just a model. Um, then also Paolo uh, De Batovic brought a, a new spectrum analyzer for measuring the magnetic field area with this frequencies and uh, we, uh, we just got, got it during this trip then and uh, we were a little green with using that but uh, we did some preliminary measurements with that equipment, um, but we didn't conclude any resource processes still evolving with that thing. Maybe Dabor can help us with uh, analyzing those data what we have with that. And uh, it's, uh, the analyzer itself is connected to Macintosh computer and also connected to PC, and uh, we made some basic measurements near the megalins and uh, basically the tunnel route then. And then uh, uh, when, during this same trip on July, we, uh, our group discovered this object from the ground and there was, uh, I had this equipment with me then and uh, I made some measurements near the object and I got this kind of results. So there is a uh, frequency response is from 20, ki 20 kilohertz until 100 kilohertz, and there's lots of magnetic fields happening. Uh, it's a millivolts per meter, and uh, uh, as I can, uh, this is this is a little bit out of my field, so called, uh, but uh, I hope that in the future we can we can. Uh, find more data with this. So, uh, back to my field. Uh, the hydrophone recordings, we, uh, I put I put the uh, hydrophones to the wrong water section. And uh, that was the thing what we were planning to do with Paolo. And there was, the results were very interesting. Um, because the sound is moving in the air as de dependent by the temperature of the air about 340 meters per second. So in the water it goes from 6 kilometers until 8 kilometers per second. So uh, sound is moving in the water element much more faster and it's also uh, uh, it's also, I feel it, it's like an antenna to 
to analyze all the earth's or ground's sounds. So, uh, <coughs> uh, this next sample is, is, the, is that thing with the peaks. And uh, the, as you can see, this 24 kilohertz, 48 kilohertz. This, uh, um, these frequencies are exact one octave from each other, and their amplitudes amplitudes are changing with the pattern. So in the rhythm. So uh, now the example of this. with the sound. <coughs> For some reason I, I can't play the sound falsely, but you can see the spikes. Um, this is here and three, uh, 3000 hertz and this is 6000 hertz and now it went away and now it comes back and it does in the rhythm and this is recorded with the hydrophones in a metano in water <coughs> so basically uh, um, this is interesting phenomenon because of, as, that this is musical interval, musical interval, and uh, also that this you can see the pattern here. It's, uh, uh, when Slobodan instruct uh, yesterday or two days ago uh, was keeping his presentation, and he showed uh, the first 28 kilohertz uh, oscilloscope picture. It reminded me about this, so it, they might be related. And uh, this... Ah, now here's the sound. Calculate and uh, 
to investigate what are the uh, are there other frequencies different in different fields here or pyramids so like that so the I don't know uh, the combination or um, re relation between those frequencies I don't know yet. There's one thing, another one, and a third one. <coughs> and this, uh, so this is, this why it goes like this, it means that this, my recording system can't record more higher. This is about 80,000 hertz in this point. And it's also noticeable that these peaks in Tumor's brackets, uh, they are not changing uh, at this knowledge what I have now. So, um, What we learn from this, um, like some, Dr. Akondi, uh, Konchi said uh, before, it's, uh, it's uh, all the all the investigations in, in every area here in, in this field uh, is, is raising more questions than answers. Is the same thing here. So um, I'm really looking forward to get to the back to the field. And, and make more investigation with SBRG group where I'm very proud to be part of it and uh, in the end uh, I would like to just play the raw uh, very original file which is not equalized or compressed anyhow uh, this is the basic sound in Ravana Tunnel with all the bass and all the um, all the white frequency white frequency response. So I think this is um, answering at least for me is answering the question: Is there something working inside the inside the pyramid? So I think that uh, there is. Thank you for your attention.